Hey guys, it's uh, been a little while since I actually got on here and I had too much time. Um, switched jobs probably a couple months ago, had a little bit more time on my hands actually getting out at 430 now, so uh, pretty good. So what I thought I'd do is I want to talk to you a little bit about Windows Azure. Um, I had a ton of experience with this probably last two years, even when some parts were in beta uh, that were being tested in the old Silverlight um, actual dashboard that they had. So. Uh, Let's go ahead and start talking about Windows Azure, what you're going to need. We're going to go ahead and just set up a WCF service, which is Windows Communication Foundation. So what are services? Um, I think that's for another tutorial. If you're here, let's start talking about uh, Windows Azure infrastructure. So one of the nice things about Windows Azure is Windows Azure really takes advantage of the cloud. Um, if you go to windowsazure.com, you're going to see up here exactly um, what it is the website is right you can sign up for your free trial here if you click free trial it's going to say okay blah 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 try it now um, what you're going to need is you're going to need your cell phone you're going to need a live account um, or now they call it microsoft account i'm going to go ahead and sign up for one of those your credit card is not going to be billed uh, it's just basically they're making sure to identify who you are okay so go ahead and go through those steps. You need your cell phone to be able to get um, an SMS text back from them with a confirmation code to ensure your identity. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna click back to the front. I already have mine done. I'm gonna click portal. And it's gonna use an identity provider, which is just your live ID, your Microsoft account. So I went ahead and just earlier today, I went up and set up my account so you don't have to sit through that. And at live.com, um, this is a temp. I'm probably going to get rid of this right as soon as these tutorials go up. Um, so I'm not too worried about anything. Um, so what's nice about this too is that there's a little bit more security now that you have a two-step verification process that and your SMS text that comes across. So right here, you're going to see Windows Azure dashboard. Um, cloud computing is something that's, that's really taking the market by storm. It goes through Amazon. You can... Uh, you know, sign up for Amazon Cloud. You can get different types of cloud capabilities through different providers. This is Microsoft's. What's nice about this is Microsoft normally gives you a 99.9% .9 um, sort of SLA or guarantee that the service will be up. Um, one of the things you might actually encounter during this is you say, okay, maybe you're using multiple APIs, okay? So 99.9, 99.9 on another, you think, oh, well, that's 99.9% uptime. Well, if 99.9% uptime fails on all five of those, you're really looking at about 99.95 uptime instead of 99.99% uptime, okay? Which is still pretty great. Has um, redundancy, so if you have multiple uh, instances running, if one of the instances fails, uh, the other one takes over right away and you can also do geospatial targeting so depending upon where your audience is uh, you can go ahead and target that so if i'm in east asia or let's say i'm in the us and my audience is in east asia i want to put a server in east asia um, i can go ahead and select that and i'll show you that in just a second so windows azure tour uh, this takes 30 second tour to see how the new management portal takes i'm gonna go through this with you guys i've used this a ton of times so uh, it's not too helpful for me, but make sure you go through. They really do take the extra time to do. So it looks different than the previous portal, right? Um, and you can create new, use the portal to quickly set up new services, resources, components, minimal initial configuration. And then commands, the command bar provides quick access to global and contextual commands such as stock, configure, delete. We'll get into those a little bit more. And your notifications. So if you're uploading something to staging or to production, you're going to have notifications if something fails, if something's successful, or if something, um, something goes on that maybe is a warning that you should take a look at, right? So it's confirming all your web configs once you're doing your uploads. So let's go ahead and click complete here. We went through that. So what do we want to create um, real quick? I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. I want to show you everything that's offered. Um, when I first started using this, there were only a few things that were offered. There were storage accounts, blob storage. So in other words, if you're wanting to store video files that are then going to get served out to people, if you're wanting to store an area for any site assets uh, that are going to be used, uh, you create a storage container. You create those private. You can create those public. Uh, depending upon what security features you want. Uh, SQL databases, a little bit different um, in Windows Azure. Uh, everything has to be clustered. You have to have a clustered index for everything versus non-clustered, which is your other option, right? 
So um, that doesn't take that much time to configure. Your SQL Azure databases also work with your uh, ETL. Any ETL you want to do extract, transforming, and load works with um, SSIS packages, right? Um, you can still do your SSRS reporting. You can still do everything that you would normally do at the database with a few minor exceptions, but they're getting better to where this is completely a capable SQL instance. Okay. Cloud services. This is where uh, you would, you know, uh, spin up your VMs. So virtual machines, if you don't know much about those, Windows Azure uh, works heavily on virtual machines. So in other words, at your normal business, you would set up infrastructure, correct? So when you set up this infrastructure, you have to go ahead and order the servers, get the servers configured. You have physical parts of your infrastructure, and then you have the parts of your infrastructure that aren't physical, right? Your operating system. Um, well, instead of spinning up one server and just having one operating system and trying to spin up another server for another service you have, uh, Microsoft basically takes all of their infrastructure and allows you to create the amount of cores that you want and um, how many instances you want. It sets up a staging environment for you and um, makes the transition really simple and seamless with Visual Studio 2013. Okay, if you feel like this is way over your head, it's okay. We're going to talk about the infrastructure, how that's going to work. You can do mobile services, mobile APIs, right? Um, basically, cloud services and mobile API are super similar. They just sort of distinguish those so people feel a little better about a couple of mobile service, uh, different configurations. And virtual machines. So you can create virtual machines, which is basically what you're doing when you create a cloud service. Uh, you're spinning up a VM that you can remote into and you can log in and you can see that it's got, you know, your server 2012, all your configurations, your IAS. You can go in there and change stuff manually if you don't want to change them on your configuration files before you upload them using a published config in Visual Studio 2013. So a lot of people think Windows Azure, oh, my God, this is something that's huge and it's out of my league and I don't know if I can do it. Yes, you can. Do it one time, one thing at a time. Uh, that's the best you do. So when you think about a website or you think about an API or you think about a service, right, uh, you're basically taking data and you're going to be structuring whatever data you are structuring. You're going to model that data, whether it be using an EDMX, whether it be using a um, DBML or whether it be using uh, N Hibernate or, or something like that for your domain modeling, your entity modeling. And then you're using your service to create contracts, um, which is these contracts are created in order to access the data, update the data. Everything you access on a daily basis is centered around data, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about the way that we're going to configure some instances in SQL Azure. Um, this is just the introduction to Windows Azure. So on the next one, we're going to create a SQL database. And the other, I want to talk about a couple other things. Uh, you have your storage, like we talked about, cloud services, mobile, virtual. Um, HD inside is something that's new. Uh, we'll talk about this one a little later. Media services is another thing with streaming. Uh, your general service buses are also available now. And Visual Studio Online, which is an awesome tool to be able to allow you to test your products, to do regression testing, to be able to scale your products, to see what's on there, keep track of your code like you would with Team Foundation Server. If you don't know anything about that, go ahead and, you know, just take a look into Team Foundation Server, see what options there are. A lot of people use a few different things on just not the way they want to keep their schedules for their teams and work things like JIRA and Confluence and things like that. Um, but they use TFS in order to schedule their tasks. You can see who is on critical path versus a non-critical path, what your estimates are, and really take advantage of that. Uh, caching capabilities, biz talk services. This is something that's been new. Um, recovery services, right? You can create vaults of your data and then recover those things. You can set up virtual networks, right? Um, and if you think it's pretty cool because you're using a VM to control your virtual networks, and then you also have the option to create DNS servers, local networks, and virtual networks. Um, this is something that I, I think is pretty amazing. Um, you could really set up a corporation all based off Windows Azure, uh, transfer everything to the cloud, and have minimal, have minimal infrastructure needed. What that means is you're only paying for what you're using. 
So it may be you're thinking I'm going to have, you know, a ton of employees come into my company in the next few, few years. You don't want to buy super small servers, right? I mean, because then you're going to have to add servers and that's going to cost you money and stuff. So Windows Azure allows you to take um, advantage of their scalability with what it is that you need with your network needs. So if you only have five employees now, you can get yourself networked up, five employees. Uh, you can get yourself some storage, you can get yourself recovery services, you can get some biz talk. Uh, you can do anything that you want to, get your website up and manage it from one place. Um, it's pretty awesome. Traffic manager, um, you can go ahead and actually manage what type of traffic I'm just going back and forth, which is pretty amazing. It makes it pretty seamless and simple. And management services. Um, you can go through all your subscriptions that you have. And we also have Active Directory, which is pretty awesome. Um, so they have add-ons here and then your settings, uh, which is basically, okay, what's your subscription ID, free trial, management certificates, your administrators, your affinity groups, and your usage. So it basically gives you an up-to-date Look at the cores you're using, what subscriptions you have, uh, your cloud services you have running, your storage accounts running, and what that means for you all together, right? All right, catch the next tutorial real quick. Uh, YouTube limits me to 15 minutes, so I'm going to cut this off. We're going to set up SQL Storage next.